Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna turn this storage room into my new office. This is my storage room, and it's gonna be my office very soon, but there's a huge amount of work to get it there. I've got stud walls with drywall, no insulation, so I have to finish the outside of these. I've got air conditioning ducts that hang down and lower the ceiling. I've got these awful lights I have to take down. I've got concrete walls I've gotta work around. My shop is on the other side of that wall, and on the other side of this wall is a big room with some windows. So to get some of that light into this room, we're gonna knock a big hole in that wall and put in a window. Let's get to it. And also, I just got new glasses, and I don't have to wear them all the time, but they do work really well as safety glasses. I ended up just dragging these into my shop to use for storage, and then just started ripping apart all of the old shelving that was in the storage room. I saved a lot of this wood and tried to reuse it in other places, took down the old lights, and then started ripping off the old sheetrock from the ceiling. It was unfinished and pretty easy to do. The reason I took down the drywall off the ceiling is because our living room is right up there. There's gonna be a lot of foot traffic and a lot of conversation up there and I wanna try to dampen that sound transfer as much as possible. I took that down so I could put insulation up there before I put the drywall back. But first, I wanna get a baseline for how loud it is in here so that we can figure out whether it's actually gonna do any good or not. On Amazon, I got this really cheap decibel meter. It was just a few dollars. And I got it several months ago for this specific reason. I wanted to be able to test the ambient noise in this room before and after I insulate the ceiling. So let's check out the ambient volume as it is right now in total silence. That's our baseline with nothing happening upstairs, no insulation, and nothing happening in this room. In a minute, I wanna test it with my kids talking and running around upstairs to get another baseline for that. Then after we get the ceiling up and the room pretty much finished, we'll test it again to see what changed. This stuff is called Roxel Safe and Sound. I've never used it before. I just heard good recommendations from people, so I thought I'd try it out. Not a sponsor or anything. This is not a thermal insulation. It's just for fire and soundproofing, and they're just big bats that go in between the joists. They look really easy to put in, so I'm just gonna slide those in the joist, but my kids just got home from school, so let's check the ambient noise in here now. These bats just slid up in between the joists like any other type of insulation. I wasn't wearing a long sleeve shirt here and my arms did get a little bit itchy, but this is not made of fiberglass, so it didn't itch me long term like normal fiberglass insulation would. This took me about an hour to get up and then I removed all of the nails from the previous drywall. At this point, I was still thinking about adding drywall again. I've got the insulation up in the ceiling, it's all ready to go, and I have all of the electrical work done. I didn't show you any of that because it's just kind of out of the scope of this video, but the next step is to cut a giant hole in that wall. We've got to cut out some 2x4s in drywall, but first we have to make a header to support the weight of that wall. Let's do that now. To make up this header, I cut down two pieces of 2x10 to the right length, and then some half inch plywood to the same length as well. I didn't have one piece that was the same size, so I kind of pieced it together and ended up with a thickness that was the same as a 2x4. This will make it fit within the framing. I glued all of these pieces together and then clamped them to hold them nice and flat and used a framing nailer to drive in some 3 inch nails to make this one solid piece. This is way overkill for this particular instance, but better safe than sorry. By the way, this wall is not load-bearing. If it was, I would definitely have to reinforce it before I started taking stuff out. I measured up from the floor and marked each one of these studs where they need to be cut off, and I also transferred that line to the wall so that I can cut the drywall at the same location. I did this on the top and the bottom, so next I gotta cut out the drywall and then the studs. Anytime you cut drywall, it's a really good idea to make a very shallow cut with a utility knife and then break it along that line. That score helps make a nice clean break. I got all of the drywall scored and then used a reciprocating saw to cut through all of the studs. Once I got all of these cut, the whole thing just kind of lifted out in mostly one piece. I knocked off those remaining pieces at the top and then started building out the new frame. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, but in this case, I used one 2x4 to act as the sill and then attached it to the top of the existing 2x4s. I added a jack stud, which is just another 2x4 on the sides to tie it into the king stud, which are the ones that are still in place from before. Another jack stud goes on top of the sill and is tied into the king stud as well. This makes it ready to put in the header. I lifted the header in place a couple of times and had to trim it a little bit to get it to fit and then eventually had to get up my big hammer to knock it into place. 
This thing was really heavy and it would be way easier if you had somebody helping you out. I was just on my own that day. A little muscle and I got it in place. Somehow I lost my footage of putting up the drywall, but I put drywall on two walls, primed and painted it. And then on the back wall, I added these four x eight whiteboard panels so I can draw and sketch and keep lists. It'll be a great work surface for ideas. Next, it was time to finish out the opening for the window. I just cut down four pieces of one by four to fit in there and held them in place. These were tight enough to stay there on their own, but I used some brads to hold them in place permanently. I used some casing around the outside of this to make it look like an actual framed window. I've got the frame for the window in place and I went back and filled all of the nail holes with some filler and while I'm waiting on that to dry, I'm going to start on the ceiling. Now instead of doing drywall, I'm actually going to put in a drop ceiling, which is something I never thought I would do, but it actually makes the most sense here. Drywall is a little bit hard to put on the ceiling by yourself unless you have a lift and it transfers sound from the room above pretty well. I don't want that, I want to try to dampen the sound and a drop ceiling should help with that at least a little bit. The tiles I'm going to use are acoustic tiles so that should dampen some of it but also the ceiling itself will be kind of suspended which should cut down on vibrations carrying through the floor into the ceiling. To get started doing the ceiling I have to mount a little L track all the way around and then drop a grid on the inside of it. I didn't have a simple way to attach this L bracket to two sides of the room so I took a piece of 1x4 and hung it from the joist. I made sure these were level so that once I had these in place, the L bracket could sit right against the bottom edge. I did leave a little gap here and that's in case in the future I want to run a line from this box down this wall so I can have a receptacle below. These tracks are made of really thin metal so you can use just about any screw to attach them to just about any surface. The important thing is that they are all level and at the same distance from the ceiling. With them in place, I measured along the two far walls every two feet and made a mark. These marks let you put in the main connector pieces from end to end. I got this little kit that came with some nice clamps and a string, and it came with tools like this to help you drive in the hangers. You put in these hangers every couple of feet along the level line and make sure that they're at the same height from the ceiling, and then this is a place that you can tie in a piece of wire. You cut that off and then use it to hang the main hangers from end to end. These pieces are called main tees and they're hung every two feet across the shortest wall in the room. These cross pieces have connectors on each end and they snap right into the sides of the main tees. You can do these every two feet or four feet or any gap that you want. The grid is all in place and now it's time to put the acoustic tiles up in there. But one thing really quickly, my grid is pretty close to the ceiling. The research that I did said you had to leave at least three inches in between the joist and your grid. And I went with three and a half thinking that that would be enough. I did get one tile in as a test, but the danger of having them close together is that you don't have enough room to wiggle the tile up in and drop it down into the grid. You can end up damaging the tile if you don't have enough room. So when you're doing this, make sure you leave enough room to be able to get them up in there or make sure you leave one of the cross braces out so that you have enough room to slide tiles up over it. Most of these will drop right in place, but if you have to make some smaller ones, they cut very easily with a utility knife. The ceiling is mostly in place, so now it's time for the window. Instead of a big piece of glass, I'm going to use a really big piece of acrylic. It is more expensive, but there are a few reasons that I'm using it. This piece of acrylic is way lighter and easier to lift up here by myself. But the biggest reason is that that room out there is going to eventually be a place that my kids are going to play and hang out, and who knows what's going to come flying at this window. Having a big piece of acrylic is just the safer way to go. Now I am kind of going for the overall look of a control room in an audio studio, but I'm not trying to recreate it. Those windows are soundproof. They're built in a very specific way to stop sound transfer. That's not what I'm doing here at all. I really just want to let light through a big opening in the wall. Installing one of these is really simple. I've done it before and it worked out great. Let's do it. I drew a line on the inside of the window from edge to edge as a point of reference. Then I cut some pieces of quarter round with miters on the ends that would fit on the inside of my window frame. I lined these up with the line that I had drawn and then nailed them in place with a brad nailer. It doesn't matter which side you do, but you want to make sure that you put all four pieces in facing one direction first. I cut down my acrylic on the table saw to match the final dimensions of the opening. Then I set the acrylic into the window frame up against the first set of trim that I had put in and then sandwiched it with another set of trim on the inside of the window. There's plastic on both sides of this acrylic that you have to pull off and that's easier to do before you put the trim on. I found these really cool LED panels that drop right into the ceiling and they are super bright. That's about it for this room. I've got a few more things I need to do, clean up some trim, 
But I got the window painted, I got pretty much everything functional. I wanna show you the whole thing. I'll move it around it with the tripod here. You can kinda of see it looks entirely different than it did before. But the last big test to do in here is to see if the soundproofing stuff worked at all. I have no idea if it did or not. First, let's check out the ambient sound to see how it is compared to what it was before. So it is a little bit lower, not a whole lot, but there's not a lot of sound anyway. So that shouldn't change a whole lot. What's really gonna matter is when the kids are directly above me like they were before. So let me go get them in place. They are actually singing right above me. There's four kids singing a song together. It's way, way better. Now I can still hear their feet rumbling a little bit. You can hear that bass of the impact, but the overall voice and the singing and all the high frequency stuff seems to be almost completely gone. That's purely from a decibel standpoint. A microphone may pick up different stuff, and so we'll have to see how it actually plays out when I'm recording a voiceover or audio or podcast or whatever, but it did make a really big improvement. One more word on that insulation though. There's no particular evidence that I've found that says any type of insulation is more soundproofing than any other type. There are a lot of soundproofing methods, but a lot of people say that regular old pink insulation does a pretty good job on its own. I just wanted to show you what I used. Take it as you will. So this office conversion is just about finished. Now I have to actually build a desk, move everything in and get it organized. And I have an entire room over there that I have to clean up as well. So I'm gonna get to that work. If you wanna see some more videos, I have lots of other projects that you may be interested in. So be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.